I recently purchased this Macintosh SE off of eBay for just under $50. After shipping, it came to about $67. As you can see, it was in pretty rough cosmetic condition, and my assumption was that its condition on the inside likely wasn't any better. In the eBay listing, the seller stated that upon turning on the computer, they would hear fan spin but no boot up chime and that they also weren't getting any image on the screen. Based on this description, I presumed that there was an issue with the logic board. Perhaps the PRAM battery wreaked havoc on the logic board's various traces and components, but regardless, my plan was to find a cheap SE with a dead logic board so that I could clean it up and install this spare working logic board I've had lying around for years now. And this SE seemed like the perfect candidate. However, when the computer finally showed up at my doorstep, I realized that my plan was going to need some drastic changes. For starters, you may have noticed that piece of tape across the front face of the computer in its eBay listing pictures. However, when it arrived, I noticed that the tape had been removed by the seller revealing this Radius Accelerator 16 badge. This indicates that this particular SE may have a relatively rare and extremely collectible accelerator card installed. So naturally, I opened the computer to see if it was still there and was relieved to find that it in fact was. And not only that, but the logic board looked to be in immaculate condition with no leaking PRAM battery. Someone had just unplugged it from the analog board, which would explain why this computer wasn't chiming or displaying an image. Unfortunately, there was not all good news for this SE, and there were a few missing components. For starters, I didn't need any tools to remove the back case of the computer because all four of the case screws were missing. The expansion bracket, hard drive, and hard drive sled were all missing as well, and it also looked like a Radius two-page display adapter was previously installed in this machine, as alluded to by this knockout plate, but it too was MIA. My guess is whoever owned this computer was in a rush to remove its hard drive before dropping it off at the recycling center and didn't bother putting back the parts they had to remove to get to it. And while the back says that this is a dual floppy drive variant, I'm almost certain that this computer had an internal hard drive. After all, that would explain why tape was covering the top floppy port of the front face and why nothing was populating the second drive bay. I also find it hard to believe that someone would go through the trouble of installing an accelerator card in this SC, but not install an internal hard drive as well. So in short, what I thought was going to be a simple logic board swap has now turned into a restoration of what has the potential to be the ultimate Macintosh SC, and in this video, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to thoroughly clean and retrobrite the case. I'm also going to replace the missing two-page display adapter as well as the missing expansion bracket. And as for the missing hard drive, I could do one of two things. I could either buy a replacement SCSI hard drive and drive sled or get a second floppy drive, restoring the SE to its original dual floppy configuration. However, since I want this to be the ultimate Macintosh SE, I'm going to go with a third option and essentially do both. I'm going to buy a second 800k floppy drive and matching drive sled to restore the dual floppy configuration, but I'm also going to install a SCSI to SD adapter, which essentially acts as an internal hard drive, while taking up very little space and making no noise whatsoever. So with that brief summary, let's get started on this restoration. The first thing I do is give the entire computer a light cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol. The whole thing was covered in a somewhat sticky substance which made it uncomfortable to handle. And while the alcohol got rid of some of the grime, it surprisingly did little overall. But at least the computer was in better condition to handle. Next, I started the disassembly process. I want to fully remove the internal components from the case plastics so that I can give them a more thorough cleaning. Here is the logic board with the Accelerator 16 expansion. Since this battery is dead, I decided to clip it off. These compact Macs will run without them, but it's something I'd like to replace in the near future. You can tell just by where it was made that this battery was likely original to the machine. Skipping ahead, and you can see that I've completely separated the case plastics from the internal components. I used this opportunity to first clean the entire case with Windex. As you can see, it cuts through practically all of the dirt and grime that wasn't removed by the alcohol. Lastly, I use baking soda and water to remove any remaining deep scratches before cleaning the entire case with soap and water. Then I let it sit in a bath of Retro Bright treatment for several hours. Skipping ahead some time, and you can see from the front face that the Retro Bright has done its job amazingly. 
So now I'll begin the process of reassembling the computer. However, I would like to point out that the CRT I'm installing isn't the same CRT that was original to this machine. I had noticed that the CRT this SE came with had severe burn-in, so I swapped it with a much nicer CRT from a Macintosh Plus parts machine I had. Coincidentally, I was also able to source some case screws from this Plus, as well as the floppy ribbon cable for the second 800K that I'll be installing later in this video. Before reinstalling this floppy drive, I want to further disassemble it to give it a good cleaning and lubricating. As you can see, it's covered in a fine layer of dust and dried grease. First, I gave it a spray of compressed air, then I used the paintbrush to remove any remaining dust. Then, I used some specialty WD-40 to lubricate the moving parts. Lastly, I cleaned the reed heads with some alcohol before exercising the drive with a blank floppy disk. Then it's back into the drive sled. As it turns out, the structural frame of this SE also needed a good dusting. I used the paintbrush again to remove a bulk of the dust and then followed that up with a cleaning with some WD-40. Seeing how everything inside this computer seemed to be coated in dust, I thought I would crack open the power supply to give it a blast of compressed air as well. Moving along with the reassembly, I had to use hot glue to reattach this front speaker since the process of removing it involved removing the case plastic that it was molded into. Next, I'm going to install this replacement two-page display card I had purchased online, but first I need to assemble it. I start by lining up these two holes of the expansion bracket with the two holes in the daughter card. I screw the expansion bracket into place, followed by these two screws. Then the card slots directly into the Accelerator 16 card, and the expansion bracket is fastened to the main frame of the computer by these three screws. Now with the computer almost completely reassembled, I can test the replacement CRT, and once I see that the picture is bright and crisp, I can transport the Macintosh to my apartment where I await the arrival of a second floppy drive and the SCSI to SD adapter. Fast forward about a week and the replacement floppy drive and dried sled finally arrived. Unfortunately, I realized that while both the top and bottom drive sleds are identical in a dual floppy SC, a third connecting piece is needed to keep the top drive in place. I tried looking for this piece online, but couldn't find any instances of it being up for sale. So, I headed to the local Home Depot to look for a simple solution that would both act as a connecting piece for my two floppy drive sleds, and act as a mounting point for the SCSI to SD adapter, which at this point had also arrived. And as it turns out, the only piece of hardware that I needed to buy was this single L-shaped bracket. First, I affixed some vinyl tape to this face of the bracket, making sure to cut out these screw holes. Then I added some mounting tape to the top drive sled in this area above where the floppy ribbon cable connects. Then I lined up the L-shaped bracket to the two screw holes on the left side of the drive sleds. Then I inserted the bottom screw. Then I lined up the left screw hole of the SCSI to SD adapter with the two holes of the drive sled and bracket. Then it was just a matter of screwing in the final screw, and now the top drive sled is securely fashioned to the bottom drive sled and the SCSI to SD adapter is firmly mounted as well. At this point it was just a matter of installing the two floppy drives into their respective sleds.
Lastly, I installed the two drives into the machine, plugged them in, and reassembled what was left. Now it's time to see the results of this restoration project. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. The case plastics look great after a thorough cleaning and retrobrite bath. Both drives read, write, and eject properly. The new CRT looks bright and crisp with no burn-in. And the SCSI to SD adapter is lightning fast and was relatively painless to set up and install. Though I do want to eventually find a disk image of Mac OS 7 instead of the 6.0.8 that is currently installed. I also unfortunately don't have a monitor to test the two-page display adapter. But regardless, this was an extremely fun project to take on. I never thought I would find an accelerated SE from my collection. And and while it was in rough shape, the process of fixing these computers is honestly the best part of the hobby in my opinion. It's always rewarding to see these old, discarded computers get a new lease on life, and I've been personally using this computer for writing projects as well as a daily planner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, this has been Colonial Puppet. Have a nice day.